Winterfield Day 2023. Good food and good fun? Oh yeah, that's what's coming up next on El Cara Ham Radio. Well, folks, we just had our Winter Field Day 2023, and here in South Central Kentucky, it was very unwinter-like. Uh, we had beautiful blue skies, no snow on the ground, and uh, it was over 50 degrees. It was a bit windy, but it was a very, very nice day. So uh, not quite as challenging as, as Winter Field Days can sometimes be, but as always, any kind of field day, summer field day or winter field day or parks on the air activations or whatever, anytime we have an ability to get our equipment, get out in the field, practice setting things up, practice erecting our antennas and using our equipment, using our radios, and just having some fun and camaraderie. And I know uh, for our club, El Cara, we uh, usually take the opportunity to try to have some good food as well. So we had uh, a smoker there. Uh, one of our members, uh, Mike, KD6FTR, brought his uh, little smoker, and we uh, smoked some things, and we had some other prepared foods and desserts, lots of drinks, uh, and the beautiful weather. So I think we had a total of, uh, of 18 folks uh, show up this year, and I believe 17 of those were actual hams, uh, and just had a really great time. But again, it's, it's an opportunity for everybody to get to practice setting up our club equipment, uh, which we've got most of our systems put together in such a way that uh, the antennas and things are not very difficult to erect, but a little bit of practice on putting the various components together, uh, what tools to use, things like that is always helpful, uh, and will just speed up and help give us confidence when we do do things out in the field. If it is uh, foul weather or any of those times where uh, typically ham radio may be called upon, uh, to help with communications in the community. So we always take the opportunity and, again, let our various members practice putting up. Here you can see a Tar Heel antenna that we have uh, with the trailer. We have an assortment of antennas we can use with the trailer for HF communications or VHF, uh, UHF communications. And we have an assortment of radios uh, for the trailer. And for this field day, uh, we were running two HF uh, rigs, as you'll see a little bit later in the video, uh, in the trailer. We also had two meters and 70 centimeters uh, going on in the trailer. Uh, I had my vehicle, as we'll see a little bit later, and uh, I know another member had his vehicle. Uh, with uh, He actually has a Tar Heel on his vehicle. I use the um, Yesu uh, Atos 120A, uh, which is also a screwdriver type antenna, uh, along with my uh, Yesu FT891 HF rig. And so we had a couple of folks uh, using our, our mobile vehicles. Uh, we also had a couple of our members uh, doing some portable activity with, uh, with uh, radios that they had set up uh, at their vehicles, uh, sort of in the field here uh, at our worldwide headquarters. So, uh, again, we were using the, the club equipment with the emergency communications trailer. We were using uh, various kinds of personal equipment. Uh, to, again, use the equipment, set things up, uh, have that experience, and again, just the fun of it. And I believe we made uh, about 50 uh, contacts that day. We're not uh, typically in the, in the game to, uh, uh, to really try to, like, win contests or anything. We just set up for these activities to get the practice and the experience, uh, have the fun, the camaraderie, and, again, usually uh, we try to have some, some good food. Uh, and just enjoy, enjoy these activities. So again, uh, summer field day, winter field day, uh, POTA activations, and other kinds of things that, that we try to get out uh, in, in the real world and do with our club. Um, I made, uh, I think, 10 contacts for my vehicle. I was on uh, 15 meters and actually managed to make a contact with a station in Hawaii. Uh, don't always reach Hawaii from here in, uh, in sort of central uh, Kentucky, but uh, had a, a nice opening. Uh, I was all up and down the West Coast uh, from my vehicle. Uh, and I know um, another member was, uh, was making some contacts, uh, again, with his vehicle. And, um, and then, again, we had two, uh, we had two of the uh, uh, ICOM 7300s in the communications trailer. 
We have other radios that we can use, Kenwoods and other things, uh, whenever we want to as well. Uh, so again, it's it was just a beautiful day, and it was a good day to get together and, again, practice doing some of these activities. Uh, this is one of the reasons we like to do, uh, again, other uh, public activities. We've worked air show. Uh, we worked the uh, rallies. We've, we've gone to the car show and set up. Uh, not only does it give us an opportunity to, to meet and, and interact with the public and, and just sort of get the hobby of ham radio out there so that people are aware of it and you know, may potentially have an interest in it, uh, but get uh, our club and our club's capabilities out there so that, again, if we were called on, to help out uh, or uh, work with children, work with local schools and things, which we also do, to uh, to pass along the, the knowledge and the information. And again, to have the, uh, the practical experience of working with the equipment, setting it up and all the rest. So yeah, we had a, a great time. Uh, and again, not really trying to uh, necessarily set any records on numbers of contacts. Of course, some clubs are really into that and that can be a lot of fun too. You know, you can really get in there and hit the various bands. And uh, we were doing 20 meters and 40 meters. Uh, I did 15 meters. Uh, I think we did, uh, I actually did make one contact on 10 meters, uh, actually a little bit later. Um, again, showing some of the food here. Uh, somebody brought some nice uh, sausages, so we smoked those. Uh, and uh, had all kinds of other food and, and uh, desserts and, and drinks and, uh, and everything. So, again, it's a great opportunity to, uh, to get out with your club uh, if you're not a member of a club, uh, and if you haven't already, look around your area. There, there's probably going to be one or more clubs not too far away. And, you know, sometimes we can have personality conflicts with folks. Uh, look at other clubs. You know, you don't necessarily have to settle on maybe one particular club. In fact, you might end up joining two or three clubs, depending on your area. Uh, I'm a member of more than one club, uh, so that's not all that unusual either. But we can enjoy the hobby on our own as well. And uh, even with events like field days, uh, you can still have that opportunity knowing that the bands are going to be kind of full. Lots of people out there and you can use your radio and get that uh, mic experience, uh, you know, for those kinds of activities. Uh, which is also one of the things that's very fun with POTA Parks on the Air. It gives us an opportunity to work the microphone uh, and either work the park or hunt those that are doing parks. So, yeah, we, we try to take all these opportunities to, again, get together as a club and, uh, and just talk about whatever's the, whatever multitude of topics on the day. Of course, quite a bit of it tends to be uh, uh, ham radio related, but you know, certainly not all of it. And again, use equipment. And in many cases, we, we can uh, get some experience using equipment that we may not personally own. You know, you may not have. Uh, an ICOM 7300, you know, I don't. My brother has one, and I tend to have Yesu equipment. So I currently have an FT, uh, FTDX10, and I had a, have FTDX, uh, uh, you know, 991A. And so I tend to, to have more uh, Yesu equipment. He's got that, and, and um, Steve KK4YUG has, a, has one, so they were using those. So that's another other kind of a cool thing. When you go to, and as a club, if you help uh, sort of plan, and have these uh, these events, you can expose people to to equipment they don't uh, have possession of, so they can get again a little more experience with different kinds of equipment. Uh, and uh, with third party traffic, you can get maybe newer hams on HF uh, through uh, again through third party. Uh, we did that. We had a couple of brand new hams uh, have their technician license uh, and uh, got them on the air, and they were able to uh, to make some contacts. Uh, you know, children, younger adults, people, we can uh, can do that. And uh, who knows, maybe even occasionally get our spouses uh, interested and involved sometimes with these uh, these activities. So, uh, you know, just showing some of the uh, the work here uh, with uh, K KY4 BDP, Brian uh, was doing some setup and, and made, uh, he made 10 or more contacts uh, with his 7300 there and then uh, kind of stepped aside and let some other folks use the radio there in the Incom trailer. And then right there on the other side of that rack, we have another station set up, another 7300 uh, on this particular day. And uh, so we, again, we're running, uh, able to run two stations simultaneously uh, with our MCOM trailer. And uh, also had the two meter, you can kind of see the, the Yaesu FTX uh, 400 there. So it's just a great opportunity and we happen to have some really great weather this year. So that was certainly very nice. So that's about it. We'll uh, start to wrap this one up. So we'll bring you folks back and, uh, and finish things up here in just a moment. 
Okay, that wraps up Winterfield Day 2023. Thanks for joining El Cara Ham Radio, and we will see you all in the next video. Remember, enjoy your radio and enjoy your hobby. 73.